Hey there. On today's video, we're going to try out Tide Wave. And what is Tide Wave? Apparently, it's a way of letting AI better understand your Elixir and Phoenix code. And there's a demo here on the homepage that I recommend you guys watch it. It seems that Tide Wave even improves the AI results for live view code, which is very interesting. So my plan today is to use my open source project, TechSchool, which is 100% Elixir and uses LiveView on the front end, connect it to Tidewave and see if we can create a new feature together. So let's check this out. Let's click on install or open source tool. I want to install it for Phoenix. Okay, so I need to install this dependency. Let me open up mix.exe. I'm going to run mixdeps.get to install. Then on our endpoint, I need to copy this code above the if code reloading right here and remove this. And that's all to run our local server, but we need to finish the configuration for our AI assistants. So let's see the full tutorial. I want to use for VS code and I want to use this MCP proxy approach. And in order to do that, I actually need to install another thing. So I'm going to install this Rust based proxy. Let me see the instructions. I have a Mac using Apple Silicon. So I'm going to copy this, go back to my terminal, paste it here. Now we have a new MCP proxy file on our root, going back to the VS code setup. Now I can configure the local MCP. So I should. First of all, open up the copilot. I need to move it to agent mode. Then I need to click on this tool, add more tools, install MCP server. It's command stdio. So now we need to list the path to our MCP proxy followed by our local server. The path to my MCP proxy is actually my current directory because I installed it here. So I'm going to copy my directory, paste it here, and then my local server, which is HTTP local host port 4000 forward slash tide wave enter. This will be tide wave text cool. And then I want to install it only for this workspace. Whoop, we're getting an error. Oh, and apparently I had to type the name of the file as well, not only the path, which makes sense. Yeah, we want to access this executable and not the folder. All right, so let me try to refresh, start the server once again, warning. Oh yeah, of course, we're getting this warning because the server is not running. Let me start off my X, discovered 10 tools, great. So apparently this is working great. Now here's one feature that I would like to add, and I want to see how well Tidewave is able to implement it. So if I click here, I'm going to be redirected to a YouTube playlist, but I would love to track how many clicks, how many times a video was watched. I think that would be a very interesting feature. I want to track that and then display on the front end how many times this video was watched. So going back to Copilot, starting with a fresh start on a new chat, I'm going to say, help me implement a feature to track how many times a video was watched. Whenever a user clicks on a course, we should track that and later display this information. I think the name of the component is course card. So I'm just going to say, then we should track that and later display this information on the course card. This is very raw and incomplete, but I want to see how well Tidewave does with little information. I forgot to mention to use Tidewave, but Copilot was smart enough to check that we have a, a cool MCP that could help him. So I'm going to say continue. 
checking the current live view. It wants to query our database. So I'm just going to allow this on this workspace. All right. Okay. So it wants to create a migration to add a view count. Cool. It's changing directories, then running a migration to add view count to courses. Let's proceed. Whoop. All right. We have a new file. Alter table courses, add view count, integer, default zero. Now let's update the course schema to include the view count field. Cool. So it changed. It added a new field to the courses schema. View count, integer. All right. Added this to the cast. And now on the courses module, context, have increment view count. All right. Now we need to run the migration. Okay. All good. That migrated successfully. Okay. Now it's going to inspect the current course card, meaning that the backend features are completed. Now we're going to start, uh, continue to iterate. Yes, please do not stop. Now we're going to start implementing the front end code. This is the part that I would love to see the results because usually AI is pretty bad when it comes to live view. So hopefully the results here are going to be very cool. Searched for index. Now I understand the structure. Okay. Oh, changing the index. Let's see that. Handle event. Oh, cool. Course clicked. It's grabbing the course ID, parsing that to an integer, incrementing the views, then doing a stream insert. It's changing the course card. Okay. Now we have a course clicked event. We're showing a pointer. Oh, and it's changing the app.js too. What's happening? And of course, redirect events. Ah, now here's the thing. I, I'm already using an anchor tag on the front end. I'm not sure I needed this redirect event. Oh, now it's asking to start the server. Okay. I already have the server run. But so I, I'm not sure what's going to happen because I need the server running for Tidewave to work. But now Tidewave wants to check the results. So I, I think I'm just going to say, hey, the server is already running. Can you check that? Well, let's test. Okay, let's test the implementation. Oh, note. Okay, continue. Oh, this. This is looking very promising. Live view is working properly and the view count column is being loaded. Uh, can I open this here? What the heck? I had no idea we had an, in, an embedded browser inside VS Code. I thought this was a, a feature exclusively for Windsurf. Okay. But yeah, I, I don't need that. Let's close this simple browser. I am simply going to accept everything. And then one thing that I like to do whenever I generate code via AI is run mix format because usually it messes up the formatting just in case. Now let's see the results. Open up my browser, refresh. Okay. Zero views rails eight the demo. If I click here, I got an error, but if I refresh the page, did it increment the views? I don't think so. Okay, so let me open up the terminal. Where is the error here? Okay, so I'm going to copy this and paste it on the terminal. See if Tidewave can check this. I'm getting this error. I want to see if it's able to resolve on its own because ideally I don't want to have any manual intervention. I want to be able to ask for something and then just fix it. So I see the issue there is occurring because the course change sets trying to work with associations that haven't been preloaded. All right. But which association? I don't think we're using any association, are we? So let me go back to the error seems to be to be have solved. Okay. It's asking to sleep for two seconds. Testing course functionality. Okay. This is very cryptic. This tide wave thing. Okay, perfect. Let me test. Okay, I'm just pressing continue. I want to see if it's able to solve the error. Am I on an infinite loop right now? That's the third time I'm running this project Evolve. 
execute SQL query. Okay, no more errors in the logs. This fix has been successfully implemented. Okay, I want to try that out. Do I need to run recompile on the code? Maybe recompile. All right. Let me go back to my local server. I want to click on my course, Phoenix Crash Course. Did it work? Let me close that. One views. If I refresh, seems correct. Click one more time, one more time, and then click here. Then on the Rails 8 demo, then on this one. Okay, one view, one view, four views, one view. That's really cool. Seems to be working. Whoop. One view. Okay, this is really cool. I'm impressed. And it was able to change the the live view code, which is impressive. Okay, before I finish this video, I actually want to code review this just to make sure that everything looks good. And if this is like according to my standards. So I'm gonna keep all the changes. I wanna close Copilot. Okay, let me clean up all this clutter. I'm going to start reviewing the code. First, this migration looks good. Just a simple alter table, all right? So I'm just gonna add that to Git, course card. Now here's the thing, it replaced the, a, the anchor tag with a div. And then I am triggering a redirect on the backend. But I think I am able to keep the anchor tag with target blank and then still trigger a click. I might be wrong, but you know what? I think I'm going to try that. So I'm going to go back here. Instead of a, I'm going to keep the A, the, the, whoop, the target will be underscore the href will be at course URL. And I'm still going to run the PHX click and the PHX value because I do need both of these. Okay. Now I want to remove this event listener of redirect. I don't like this. So I'm going to remove this. This doesn't feel right. And then I'm going back to the index. And there you go. We have the handle event clicked. I'm going to increment the view count. Apparently this stream insert worked and then push event redirect to course. The new tab is going to be opened by the default HTML behavior. Like I shouldn't be, I shouldn't need to push a redirect event via backend. So I removed that. Let me see if I'm missing anything else. View count, view count change set, course. Oh, hold up. This code is a bit weird. Let me open up this. Increment view count. So first I'm grabbing the course, then doing a change set on it and then updating. After that, we get the updated course, then the reloaded course is the updated course with this preload. Yeah, here's the thing. I have a, a function here to add the channel URL, the channel and the course URL, which, yeah, I need the channel loaded, but I don't like this. So I'm just going to say, yeah, I don't need this force true. I'm just going to grab the updated course, preload the channel, and that should be enough. And I hate the fact that AI keeps adding comments, like unnecessary comments all over the place. Okay. I think that's all. Like, let's see if that works. Hopefully I don't need that annoying event listener for redirect. So do I need to recompile? I think I do, but maybe it just did before. Okay. Recompile. Though. Let me go back to the, this page. If I go back and I click here again four views, five views, six, seven, eight. If I go to Rails 8 Unpacked, one view, full goal length tutorial, one view, one view, two views. Great, folks. I think that's it. My overall review is the setup is a bit complicated, but 
like you just need to do it once and then after you do it you're good to go you don't need to run the setup again and as you can see i configured this mcp on my vs code folder meaning that anyone that works on the same team that i'm working for is going to have access to this folder inside vs code and then you can just run the same mcp that i am running so this is very practical for teamwork but yeah overall i would say that i'm pretty happy with this feature now i even tried adding some pagination here like clicking on load more and then if i click on this course from jacob again it works the pagination is working i did not yeah no bugs here this is great so yeah i'm about to push this to production thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it see you next time